Now, though, we've already been talking about the rise in COVID-19 infections levels and the measures that's been taken to try and tackle that. So let's stick with what that theme and we can talk now to the Health Secretary, Matt Hancock. Thank you very much for being on the programme. Now, I know you don't want to have another national lockdown like the one that we saw from March, but should we be preparing for more national restrictions? Well, the nation faces a, a tipping point and we have a choice and the choice is either that everybody follows the rules the rule of six and the need to self-isolate if you have a positive test or if you're contacted by nhs test and trace or we will have to take more measures and i don't want to see more measures more restrictive measures but unfortunately if people don't follow the rules that's how the virus spreads and we know so much more about the virus and how it spreads uh, now than we did last time and we can see what people need to do and that's why we have these super simple rules the, su the rule of six and then if you've got a positive test or if you've been a contact of somebody who's a positive test you must self-isolate and we're bringing in this stronger uh, this stronger uh, rules around that self-isolation with the support for people who need to self-isolate so that everybody must do it. Um, it's some pretty tough rules you're bringing in, as you say. Uh, fines uh, if you fail to self-isolate, up to £10,000 as a legal duty. Um, you're talking about how important it is. If you knew of somebody who was breaking that, who should be self-isolating and they weren't, would you report on them? Yes, and everybody should. And the reason for that is that the way that we control this virus is by breaking the chains of transmission. And the number one thing that everybody can do is the basics, hands, face and space. They save lives. Uh, and making sure that, if you, that you follow the rule of six and the social distancing. Everybody has got a part to play in this. It's so important. And then if you test positive and or if you've been a contact and had NHS test and trace phone you up and say that you must self-isolate then it is absolutely critical that you do to break that chain of transmission and to stop the growth of this virus and it's because it's so important that we've brought in this uh, this mandation with the fines of up to £10,000 if you don't do it but at the same time we've brought in support financial support for anybody on on low incomes £500 payment to make sure that everybody can do it and also that everybody must do the self-isolation and it's the combination of these two the support but also the requirement to stick by the rules uh, that is going to help to break these chains of transmission and to keep the virus under control. And as I say, you know, about, are, um, this is a really difficult about, moment. Um, you're talking about how important it is that people uh, follow the rules. Um, my question to you is, what does your data show? Are people following the rule of six? Are people getting a bit lax? And if they are getting lax, does that mean that national restrictions could be around the corner? Well, people have got more relaxed over the summer. Uh, and of course, I understand that. And, you know, we're all human. Uh, but now is the moment when everybody needs to get back to the, the rule of six, the, uh, the, the hands face space, so important. Are you important. worried about people breaking uh, the rules then? Are you worried about the data? Well, the data. Yeah, yes, of course. And if, if I wasn't worried about people breaking the self isolation rules, we wouldn't be bringing in £10,000 fines to make sure that everybody who needs to self isolate does self isolate. But as I say, Sophie, we also bring in the support alongside that so that people have that financial support. And we've seen, you asked about the data, we have seen in the data the, that some people who need to self-isolate, not doing so. And of course, if you've been asked to self-isolate, then you are highly, you either definitely have coronavirus or you are highly likely to have coronavirus. And so it is mission critical that you uh, isolate and this self-isolation isn't like, you know, in lockdown, what it was for everybody. It means you do not leave your home. You're talking about the need for everyone to follow the rules. And I can't help but think that 
to get people to follow the rules, you have to get people to believe in them, to think that they're fair, to see why they're being imposed. You know, just to take one example, grouse shooting, exempt from the rule of six. Why is it OK for 30 men to kill grouse, but it's not OK uh, for seven children to feed ducks? Uh, no. Um, the, there are a number of sports that fit within uh, the rule of six because of the distance, you know, because you're, you're further apart. Um, so absolutely we allow for, uh, for um, organised football, organised, uh, well, organised cricket until the weather turns, organised sports. Um, and the rule of six is there for a reason and everybody, for, everybody understands it. That and is one the of the reasons priority. Uh, no, because I think sports are a really important uh, priority where they're Brown organised in a COVID priority. secure Brown way. Is an important well, it, it's just within a sports uh, category of sports and, the, and sports broadly are important and best done in a COVID secure way. So if you think, you know, let's step back. What is the overall strategy? The overall strategy is to suppress the virus as much as possible, protecting education and employment and we also protect uh, organized sports where it's organized so that there are covid secure rules because it's so good for people's for people's health um, and in this second wave i want people i want to be able to you know keep as much of the nhs going as possible i want to learn from what we've learned from last time we've put in we've got a plan and stronger rules around social care along with over half a billion pounds of support We've got a plan to keep the NHS going as much as is possible and almost £3 billion of extra support. Uh, and, and for instance, the bigger accidents and emergencies that we announced last week. We've got a plan to get through this as best we can. But okay. it is critical okay. that every single person plays their part everyone faces a choice and it comes down to the individual moments you know okay. should i go to that party where i think there might not be social distancing the answer is no you should not and we're going to put in both the support but also the uh, the clarity around those rules so that okay. everybody knows what they need to do if that doesn't happen, uh, people, of course, will be thinking about what restrictions, what measures could be imposed. There's just two things I want to ask you about quickly. Lots of talk about a two-week circuit break. Is that under consideration? And also the London Mayor, Sadiq Khan, uh, has been saying that further restrictions are increasingly likely in London. Is he right? Well, as you know, the, um, the local approach to taking action is something that we've... Uh, we've increasingly relied upon uh, the first line of defense is is what in everybody does is individual behavior and social distancing and we're strengthening on that the two week circuit break and restrictions in london what, what's the answer to that well that was the answer i was giving so the first line of defense is people's behavior the then after that local lockdowns are necessary and i brought in a local action right across different parts of the country where cases are rising and you'll have seen uh, last week that I did that in the northeast and in uh, Lancashire and other parts of the country. Um, I, I mean I've had discussions this week with the Mayor of London and the teams are meeting uh, today to discuss further what might be needed um, but in terms of a uh, national action of course we don't rule that out but everybody wants to avoid it i want to avoid it i see the economic impact of it and i want to avoid it and in a way i'm requesting the help of the british people because we truly have got to do this together i agree with what keir starmer said toward the end of that interview when he said we all need to come together once again to fight this virus every single person watching this program has a part to play we will support people to do the right thing and we will come down hard on people who do the wrong thing. But you have a choice, every viewer has a choice about whether we end up with this virus going out of control. And it, is, it comes down to the individual choices of the 60 million people who live in this country as to, as to whether we can keep it there with the local uh, lockdown approach or whether we have to take further national action. 
Um, part of the equation as well is testing and the test and trace system, uh, which does appear to be under some pretty severe strain right now. Demand three or four times greater than supply. I'm honestly a bit confused about what has happened. So I was wondering what, whether you can explain it to me, because I should keep reminding us, we're doing a lot of testing. We're testing more than France, Germany, South Korea, but the system is still overwhelmed. Why is that? Is there a problem with processing at the labs? Is there a problem uh, that uh, it, we're not, we've just underestimated the number of people who need tests? What's gone wrong? So uh, uh, it's very, it's very, in a way, it's very simple what happened and what uh, the challenge has been over the last week. Um, and, um, uh, and everybody, again, can play their part in helping to fix it. So capacity is at record levels. It's now at over a quarter of a million capacity per day. And as you say, that's bigger than almost any other country around the world. Um, the, um, the, the problem is that we suddenly got a spike in people who don't have symptoms coming forward for a test. Uh, and that meant that the demand went from below the capacity we've got to above it. And, and that led to enormous frustration amongst people who who did have symptoms and wanted a test. I totally get that and understand that. Um, and we have, thankfully, over the last couple of days, since this has been widely discussed and I've been out and about, and you know, we've had people out and about saying, only come forward if you have uh, the symptoms and don't come forward if you haven't. We have seen, thankfully, the demand starting to come down again to more manageable levels. I don't understand as well. Uh, but we've what got to keep... to understand as well is why this surge in demand wasn't seen. So Baroness Harding, the head of Test and Trace, said this week that nobody was expecting to see the really sizable increase in demand. I mean, honestly, I find that quite astonishing. You know, children get temperatures, colds, coughs all the time. Um, you're a parent, the Prime Minister's a parent. Why did no one think that, oh, yeah, when nurseries and schools go back, there's going to be a huge demand for testing? So, the, of course, there's an, uh, the, we expected an increase in demand due to people with symptoms. But what, uh, what nobody could have predicted was that a whole load of people who don't have symptoms but suddenly came forward for a test. you encourage people to come test. forward for testing for as well. You encourage people to come forward to testing too. On the 21st of July, you said, if you have symptoms have, or if you have any doubts, you, have you should get a test. Yeah. Uh, if you have symptoms, exactly right. Or and, if you have any doubts. Uh, of course, about whether about the symptoms, but not if you don't have symptoms. And of course, in the summer, capacity was well above demand, and so we did give anybody who came forward a test. And uh, you know, I wanted to do that because uh, um, because we had that capacity available. Now that demand is above capacity, it's very important that we prioritise people with symptoms. And again, every single person has a role to play in this. Very quickly, Sir Keir Starmer said uh, that the Prime Minister should apologise for what's happened with testing. Will you apologise? Uh, no, because I strongly and emphatically support my team, who okay. have done an amazing job at building capacity to over a quarter of a million tests okay. a day from now almost nothing. On. And they've done... I, I will just... Yeah, you know, I, I will endlessly defend my team. They've they've just put doing the most amazing work day in day out, seven days a week. Absolutely brilliant, brilliant people. Sorry to move on. Um, it's just that I do really want to get in question about care homes, which I know is such an important uh, issue, something that many people will be very worried about. You know, twenty thousand people in care homes died with COVID nineteen. Uh, and many people think that one of the big mistakes this government made was discharging people from hospital with COVID back into care homes, potentially seeding new infections there. Now, I just want to read you the guidance for care homes on the government website that was updated early this month. It says, a small number of people may be discharged from hospital within the 14-day period from the onset of COVID-19 symptoms. They will have been COVID-19 tested and have confirmed COVID positive status. What is going on? Are we about to make the same mistake again? Uh, no. Uh, we, uh, we, we must look after people who have a positive uh, test for COVID. Of course we must. And they have to go, if they, are, uh, if they need to leave hospital, and of course hospital is also uh, a, 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 um, a, a challenging environment, then they must go into isolation. And the CQC's role is to ensure that that isolation is, uh, is done effectively. Um, so we absolutely will uh, protect 
care homes from people, both you know whether it's uh, uh, staff moving between care homes, and that has we've got to see an end of that. Uh, the regular testing in care homes, one of, the, one of the challenges, one of the reasons that we have a very public challenge in the testing system is because of the quarter of a million capacity, I send over 100,000 tests a day to social care so that they get weekly testing of staff and monthly testing of residents to keep people safe. And I will okay. keep doing that no matter what the public pressure. And then the rules around discharge are all about if somebody has a, a positive test and everybody gets tested on the way into a care home, if somebody has a positive test, they must be isolated uh, and, uh, and okay. made sure that they therefore uh, protect from the spread. Understand uh, the, the precautions you put in place, but do you think some people are still concerned uh, about the idea that people could be moved to care homes? Just finally, the last six months has been the kind of six months that no you can't you i'm sorry i'm sorry Sophie. i just want to you can't you can't just throw out a comment like that um uh, uh, these rules are incredibly stringent about the need for isolation if people but how easy test is it for positive. care homes to isolate and compared to hospital tests. settings you're talking about tests well we know that the number of satellite tests are now being turned around in on average in much less than the 24-hour period uh, and we know, of course, that, the, that the, when you discharge people with COVID-19 before to care homes, there are concerns about seeded infections. Some people will be very worried that this is about to happen again. Yeah, I, I understand the concerns and that's why we've been working so hard on it. Uh, if, if a care home doesn't have isolation facilities or we don't think they're good enough, nobody will go to that care home uh, who tests positive. Uh, and we have isolation facilities outside of care homes precisely for this reason. I, the reason I wanted to come back to this point is because it's so important to, uh, to, ex to explain what we're doing to isolate people so that there will not be people with coronavirus going into the general care of care homes. It's just incredibly important uh, and it's incredibly important, of course, that that happens for the reasons that we all understand. Um Finally, the last six months, the kind of six months that ho no health secretary would hope that they would ever have to face. Um, tens of thousands of people died. The Prime Minister saying that we're now in the second wave. How worried are you about the virus and have you got the stamina for the fight ahead? Well, um, on the last point, yes, uh, uh, personally, uh, I feel incredibly motivated to do the right thing. Um, and, um, uh, and we've built a, a very, very strong uh, team uh, who are putting that in place. And, you know, uh, uh, this care home uh, example is a, is a good one. You know, I could get less flack from the papers by putting more uh, tests into the drive-through centres, but, uh, but I'd have to take them away from people who, who are the most vulnerable to, to dying in care homes. So I'm going to do the right thing there, not the easy or... Uh, or, or popular thing, um, the um, and, and you know it's that that is what motivates me. So, you know, I just get up every morning and do it the best I possibly can for the nation, and then I go to bed at night. And when I wake up the next day, I do the same, and that's how I can um, sleep easy at night. Um, but of course, I'm very worried, and I'm very worried about this second wave. And we've seen in other countries around Europe how it can absolutely shoot through the roof. We've actually though seen how you can tackle it and you know come with me to Belgium where they saw a second wave very similar in shape to what we're seeing here and then they brought in extra measures and crucially everybody did their bit and followed them and then they brought that second wave back under control without a full-blown national lockdown but just with more restrictions on essentially on socializing so we can get through this together but I can't under un, I can't underemphasize the importance of the message today, right now, which is you must follow the rules, you must follow all of the social distancing rules on all occasions, and that way we can avoid a, a, an incredibly uh, difficult lockdown again, and instead we can get through this until the, the, until the cavalry come of the, uh, 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 of, the, of the vaccine and the mass testing and the treatments that are on the horizon. OK, Matt Hancock, Health Secretary, thank you very much for being on the show today. Thank you.